This episode of I Love Lucy, uh, I think, is um, one of the great, it gives us some of the great moments of, of TV comedy. Um, I think if, if anybody puts together a list of sort of the, you know, the, the, the greatest comedic moments in the history of television, I think this episode from the first season of I Love Lucy uh, would, would have to be pretty high on that list. And that's really where, you know, that's really where the intention should be on the sort of the, the comedic excellence of this, of this episode. It's just a, it's an en endlessly funny thing. But I, I do think we can see some other things at work. I think we can see in this episode um, sort of hints of things that are happening in the culture. One is that this, this episode was first recorded in 19... 52, or was first shown in 1952, seven years after the, the Second World War ended. And during the Second World War, a, a lot of women go into the workplace uh, as part uh, to participate in, you know, the, the, the work of the war as men are, are in, in the military. After the war, it's not very controversial. A lot of those women then go back to domestic life. But I think a lot of them uh, having had that experience of being employed, having had that experience of being in public life, I think a, a fair number of them want to go back. And so we're seeing the stirrings of what we'll call the women's movement. I, I think we, we can see that a bit in the Lucy show generally, but particularly in this episode. Also, of course, the country is moving toward racial integration. And here we have <clears throat> an interracial marriage. Uh, Lucy, a white woman, and Ricky, a Cuban man. And then uh, we see also the development of a consumer culture. After the Second World War, the country is experiencing tremendous economic boom. Uh, along with the economic boom comes television, as television begins to spread. Leisure time, that is, the, which gives Americans the ability to, you know, to uh, spend more of their income on entertainment. These are some of the themes that we see at work in this episode. When the episode begins, we see Lucy doing something very traditional, and that is sewing up her husband's socks. It's hard to imagine anyone sewing up a hole in, in a sock today because so socks are so inexpensive. But at the, at the beginning of the show, uh, um, Lucy is doing something uh, very traditional and sewing up her husband's socks. Uh, on the on the racial integration thing, uh, just something to notice. You'll notice the the chain there, <coughs> in that that Ricky that Ricky's wearing, and when I saw that, um, it did remind me of a of a fashion among um, Hispanic men in the 1950s. I don't think it's only Hispanic men, but it's usually thought of as being mainly a a fashion among Hispanic men of that of that chain linked to. Um, a style uh, referred to as the zoot suit, Z-O-O-T. And anyway, I don't want to make a big, big deal of it, but when I looked at this scene, I noticed that. But there's Lucy uh, darning the socks, and, and there's Ricky, who's appreciative that his wife is darning his socks, and it seems like a very traditional thing. We are reminded that, uh, you know, this is an interracial marriage, uh, because of Ricky's accent. Uh, he speaks English perfectly. His grammar is, uh, is close to perfect, if not perfect, but he does have an accent. And so there's a funny scene early on where he uh, pronounces the word experience as experience, and then Lucy will uh, sort of throw that back at him. And that's very funny, but we're reminded that it's an interracial couple. Now, that, that this is an interracial couple. Not a big deal today, I mean, we hardly notice today, but in 1952, uh, this was something brand new. And I think we have to say that in 1952, it would be unthinkable to have a couple with uh, a black spouse and a white spouse. I think it would even be probably unthinkable to have a spouse of Mexican origin and a white spouse. Uh, Cuba had held a special place in the American mind um, for uh, a long time, since the early 1800s, the United States had played the key role in liberating Cuba from Spain back in 1898. In the 1950s, Cuba was um, kind of an American playground, 
And so Cuba had a special place in the American mind. So if we're going to have an interracial couple very, very early in the history of TV, this is probably the, the mix that makes the most sense. And of course, Lucy and Ricky were married in real life. Well, as the story goes, Ricky discovers that he needs to hire a woman to do a commercial uh, for a TV show that he's putting together, and we can hear Lucy listening in. And Lucy um, has ambitions. I think she's like other women in the, you know, she's like women in, in the economy at the time who are in the country at the time who, you know, who, who have this memory of the Second World War when women were involved in, 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 in the public culture, they're involved in the workplace, more involved than, than they had been in the past. And I think like a lot of them, Lucy's ambitious to kind of have, have an economic life of her own. Uh, and so she's listening in to Ricky. And so she wants Ricky to give her the commercial when Ricky, as usual, refuses to do it. So one of the ways Lucy decides to try to convince Ricky that she's capable of, of doing the commercial is by, as you can see here, putting herself in, in a television. So when Ricky comes home, uh, Lucy colludes with her landlord, Fred, and um, and she puts on a little show, and it's, it's very funny uh, what happens here. Now, of course, this scene here points us to uh, really something new in American society, and that is the advent of television. Now, television had been around uh, for over a decade at this point, but it doesn't really become a fact of American life. Until we get into the 1950s, you'll notice that when this show is, um, is uh, broadcast for the first time, uh, just about a third of Americans even have a television set, okay? That's going to change very, very rapidly. But in 1952, just a little over a third of Americans have a TV. So the fact that we have Lucy inside a television set trying to convince her husband that she can, you know, be uh, a good television presence, it points to this, this, this change. Notice also that Lucy is is presenting herself as selling a product and that points us to the consumer culture. After the Second World War through the 1950s into the early 1960s, the country is experiencing tremendous economic boom. People have a lot of disposable income and of course if you if you want to sell stuff this is a, a great economy. So Lucy presents herself as as being a salesperson here on the TV. Now Ricky is not impressed uh, with this performance, and so we have this dynamic where, you know, Lucy's kind of ambitious and, and wants to have, you know, an economic life of her own and would like to be a celebrity in her own right, uh, and Ricky, you know, sort of continuously tamps that down. Uh, the next morning, uh, Lucy is very upset with Ricky for not going along with her thinking. And, you know, we see this dynamic again where, you know, there are very traditional things at work, but then there's Lucy's independence pushing against it. So Ricky, the next morning, uh, says, I don't care if you're going to talk to me or not, but please get up and fix my breakfast. So, yeah, this is a very traditional thing of, you know, the wife darting the husband's socks, uh, the wife making the husband's breakfast. This is, you know, pretty, pretty traditional stuff. Uh, notice, by the way, you'll also see that that these are single beds that have been pushed together. You can see the line down the middle. And actually, very, very early in the show, the beds are actually separated. Of course, in 1952, you know, this is a little touchy, having even a married couple in the same bed. But the, but the beds are pushed together, at least uh, by this point. Anyway, Ricky says, you know, get up. I don't care if you're going to talk to me or not, but please get up and fix my breakfast. I need my strength. Uh, what do you want me to do? Starve to death? And then Lucy very in a very funny way, uh, says that she thinks that that's not, that's not a bad idea. Anyway, in the next scene, uh, Ricky um, gets a call. Uh, Ricky actually asks Fred, his landlord, to, to stay in, in the apartment uh, and to pass a message on the phone. And the message on the phone is to the woman that Ricky has hired to do the, the commercial. Well, Lucy hears this, and then she asks Fred to go away. Uh, and she's going to take the call herself. And when the young woman who's, who's been hired to do the commercial calls, Lucy said that her services are no longer needed, and now Lucy's plot goes into, uh, Lucy's scheme goes into effect, 
and she's quite delighted. She thinks she has succeeded in getting rid of this other woman who's going to do the commercial, and now Lucy is going to s step in and do the commercial. And the commercial is for something called Vitamita Vegemin, right? It's supposedly some, some sort of health, health product. And uh, this points to the, the consumer culture, right? I mean, uh, something that uh, in a poor society would probably be considered a luxury item, although it's, you know, supposedly for health. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's going to be produced in very wealthy societies where people have disposable income. Now, one of the ingredients of this is 23% uh, alcohol. And now, now, you know, we can guess where things are going. Now, as Lucy comes in, she presents herself not as Lucy Ricardo, which is her ac actual name, but as Lucy McGillicuddy. And uh, anyway, she comes in, and the, the, the commercial director says something to her in a very casual way, which today, you know, could, you know, could lead to a harassment claim. Uh, and, you know, he sort of looks Lucy up and down and says, Ricky sure knows how to pick him. In other words, you know, he thinks that Lucy is the, is the woman that Ricky has hired to do the, the commercial. It's, it's unimaginable, really, to, to think of, of an employer saying this today. So we see how things have changed. But it does point, it does point us to a, a world that has, has significantly gone away, a world in which wives, you know, sew up their husband's socks, a world in which wives make their husband's breakfast, a world in, in which bosses can speak casually to women in this, in this way. Anyway, uh, Lucy begins to practice the commercial, and uh, it's all it's all very funny. But I, I think, um, and uh, you know, famous line as she goes through the commercial is, "It's so tasty too." But she hasn't actually tasted it yet. And probably the the high point of uh, of this is when Lucy does actually taste it for the first time. And you can see the expression on her face. This has just got to be one of the the all time greatest comedic moments in the history of television. And I think, you know, we, we, we gain some insight into Lucille Ball's brilliance as a comedian. If you turn the volume off and just watch the facial expressions, um, it, is, uh, it is really incredible what, what, she's, what she's able to do. But this is really one of the, one of the all-time, it's got to be all, one of the all-time great moments in the history of comedy uh, in, in the United States. In any event, uh, Lucy, you know, as she continuously is practicing her lines, her director asks her to do it over, and, you know, and of course as she's doing this, she's taking in one tablespoon after another of this liquid that, is, that is, has 23% alcohol. So it's not long before Lucy begins to feel the effect of this. Now, you know, part of this is that Ricky comes in and you know, obviously has an indication of what's happened. He, he very funnily says, you know, uh, what, what did you do to the girl who was supposed to be here? That's, uh, that's pretty close to a quote. Um, you know, sort of, um, in, you know, indicating that Lucy had done something, something underhanded. Uh, in any event, you know, Ricky, you know, again, we have this tension of the woman who wants to kind of do her own thing and, uh, and Ricky, who's kind of wanting to tamp it down. So Ricky says, okay, Lucy, you, you've got to go. But the director says, look, there's not enough time, and, and Lucy actually, after all, is, is doing a pretty good job. And so Ricky says to her, okay, you can do it tonight, but only because it's late and we're in a spot, you understand? And then he says, and you better be good, too. So notice that language. It's, it's language that's really hard to imagine, you know, a husband getting away with today, you know, speaking to a wife in this way, in this kind of bossy, uh, put-downish kind of way, right? And in the show, it, it comes across as lighthearted, and there's nothing, there's, there's no ill will here. Um, but you do get this feeling of this, you know, that we've got a, a woman here who, you know, is, is still in this very traditional world, but she does want to have, have her own place. And she does respond, I believe she responds, yes, sir, and she calls, she calls the men, sir, the men always refer to the girl. Um, so where's the girl who will do the, the commercial? That's how the men talk. Lucy calls her boss, uh, sir. And I think, if I remember correctly, she also uh, says the same to, to Ricky in, in this case. Well, as we go on, and Lucy continues to practice the, the commercial, 
um, the alcohol has, has taken its toll. And she can no longer say Vita, Vita Mita Vegemin. And uh, it's, a, it's a great moment when, um, you know, the alcohol has, has taken its effect. And she says, well, I'm your Vita Vidi VG Vat girl or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, something like that. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's really wonderful. Well, anyway, Lucy, clearly drunk, has gone off to, to take a break before the show comes on. The show does begin, and Ricky Ricardo comes out, and here, you know, we're once again reminded of Cuba. Cuba is kind of our, our uh, national playground. He comes out and begins to sing a song in Spanish. And it seems to be going well, although we're wondering what's, what's become of the young woman who's supposed to do the commercial for us. Well, anyway, Lucy comes out, as she sees her husband singing, uh, she is clearly drunk and now steps on to the onto the scene. If you look at, um, at Ricky's face, I think I think we can again gain ins insight into why the show was so successful uh, in its first years. Uh, it's not just the acting, but um, their command over facial expressions is is really really extraordinary. And so you can look at Ricky's face, it, and you can just see in in his own mind his thinking that his the show that he's worked so hard to put on is on the point of, of being uh, being destroyed by his now drunken wife who's who's come on to the scene. Re being reminded of the, the you know the the growing importance of television in the early 1950s as Ricky continues to sing, uh, Lucy goes up to the camera and waves hello to her friends, uh, Fred and Ethel. Um, you know, just this desire to, to be seen on television, right? And, and this is linked to the fact of celebrity. Of course, with the rise of television comes not the rise of celebrity. We have other celebrities, radio celebrities, but, you know, this idea of celebrity takes, takes hold in a much, much greater way. And the show ends with Ricky sort of in a state of desperation, uh, carrying Lucy off the scene. Um, more than anything, uh, I think that this episode should just be enjoyed for what it is, and that is just wonderful, uh, wonderful, excellent comedy. And I'm making this, uh, this video at the time when, you know, the coronavirus is sweeping the world and there's a lot of anxiety and it seems like people are increasingly in a bad mood. Uh, so maybe that's a good reason, that's all the more reason to, to, to watch this episode. And so that's the main thing, just enjoy it. We don't want to analyze it to death. But I do think that in this episode, there are, we, we, we can see how this episode shows certain things that are going on in the culture. One is that there is a greater desire among women to have more of a place, more of a place uh, in, in, in public, more of a place in the public culture, to have their own economic lives. I, I think we see that with Lucy, really in the show generally, but we certainly see it in this episode. In the show generally, we see the steps toward racial integration that the country is taking. The military, for example, is racially desegregated in 1948. Um, the very important Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision, which deseg which, you know, in which the Supreme Court says that schools can no longer be racially segregated, that court decision comes down two years later in 1954. So 1948, military desegregation, 1954, school desegregation. This show comes right in, in the middle. And as I said earlier, I think to have, you know, a, to present a couple where one spouse is African American, one spouse is white, I think that this is unthinkable in 1952. Um, but it's still an interracial, uh, an interracial couple. In fact, Lucy and Ricky were married but to display that, to, to put that on display in front of the American public in a show that is very, very popular, I think maybe, uh, maybe it would be hard to understate the importance of that, a show that is very, very popular, um, and at the center of this very, very popular show is an interracial couple. I think this is probably historically an important moment. And then in, you know, the show itself, of course, is, reminds us of, the fact of television, which is almost nowhere in 1950, 
uh, not a not a significant force in the country in 1950. By 1960, a very significant force in the country. Shows like I Love Lucy have have played an important role. But then we see Lucy as someone aspiring to be on television as well. That shows us again the the importance of this medium. And then uh, just the the fact, for example, that that Ricky makes his living as an entertainer. This points to a consumer culture, it points to a culture of leisure where more and more people have disposable income and so they can spend money on going to clubs and, and being entertained in that way. More than any other thing, uh, this is something that should be enjoyed, but it does point to certain important things that are happening in American culture.